Hello there, folks. It's another episode of... Uh, Good morning. <laughs> Good morning for you. And it's afternoon yeah, for very me. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's Surfle Cast episode 14. And we are uh, going to do another topic of the day, which uh, features another top 10. Yeah? Which is underrated games. Which very much needs our attention yeah i think i think other under, underrated games need our attention but of course we're going to do some other topics uh, they definitely need that yeah <laughs> we're going to do some other topics as well uh a mini game of a sort and then we're going to dive into the topic of the day but as always we um we start with our recent plays and we're going to talk about that so kyle what have you played so far it's been like well, you know, this has been three weeks. this has been a bounteous season of uh, Kickstarter games coming in, and so I've been trying to stay on top of things. Although, if you could see this room, you could tell that I'm not on top of things. Um, the things the are on top I've of you. Played recently <laughs> that I really enjoy. I, I'm swimming in a pile of cardboard. Um, the game that I've played recently that's a new game uh, is that I've really enjoyed is Tainted Grail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Get that. I don't know if you know much about that one. It's it's kind I of do. like it, it. It feels a lot like Gloomhaven or like Seventh Continent. It's that style of game, except there's perhaps a little bit more story than in Seventh Continent, but there's a lot more of the you know physical exploration exploration than in Gloomhaven. So it kind of feels like a bit of a marriage between those two. I've I've, I've not played it much yet, but I'm quite impressed with what I have seen. Uh, the tutorial that's in there is fantastic. If you didn't want to read the, the rule books a little bit, it's not poorly written, but there are a lot of rules, and the tutorial is a great way to kind of get there without having to go through all of those, and then you can kind of backfill as you go. But it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's a good... You know, there's some story that's interesting, but the combat system is what's especially um, intriguing because you've got these, <laughs> you've got your little abilities that you can upgrade and then into combat you'll play a card and based on what you've upgraded, that might you know trigger some bonus or penalty. And then you can play extra cards if you, if they have sort of a matching symbol and you can, but, but you want to get to the point in combat where the, as soon as you're done, the enemy does something and you can see what that something's going to be. So you want to make sure that you stop, you know, your turn when you're going to take a penalty that doesn't bother you. <laughs> and then, you know, then you can resume. So it's, it's sort of very heady, but it's really quite interesting. And I have, I have been rather impressed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I know about this one. I was about to back it, but I convinced myself not to. So that's yeah. Jamie Grail. Yeah, something I want to try, but something I feel could be a, a smaller group experience. It seems like more like a solo. I'm, I'm unable to hear you. Let me. Uh... Do you hear me now? I'm wondering what's happening here. Are you speaking? Yes, I do speak right now. Oh dear. That's fine. So so far, I'm gonna dive into uh... that. Tainted Grail. Why other I while other people some audio visual problems. So while other people are watching, I hope other people are hearing me. Are you still there? I am. Well, uh, let um, me see. I don't know what's going on. Who knew? Oh, that's. I might have to. Is it possible to, for me to leave and come back? Yes, it is. So <laughs> while we wait for Kyle to come back, I'm sorry about the interruptions. It's that's that's the online live sharing screen things that's going on. But anyway, while Kyle gets back, um, the Tainting Grail, which is this one over here, I was about to back it on Kickstarter, and I was like, mm, it sounds like more like a solo game, not a cooperative game. And I didn't really feel like going into that and spending a lot of money on that. But this is from Awakened Realms, who did the same. Uh, they also did the uh, Nemesis. They did the uh, This War of Mine. 
and so on. So they did a lot of stuff, and I'm I'm sure this game is is really cool based on like the, the story wise you know it's 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 like a Turian legend but the like dark Turian legend which is really really cool I, I like that side of the story so yeah that's that's um that's that's the tainted grail and while we're waiting for kyle i'm gonna just uh, tune in for my and uh, next recent play and now we're gonna <laughs> Oh yeah, you're back. Good. And now you hear me. Sorry. Yes, I can. Good. Good. Because I, I was talking about Tainting Grail a little bit. So I was uh, filling the screen time. Okay. No, so sorry. <laughs> that's that's fine. So it's it's internet. Internet is evil. That's that's what we know. And I was about to go into my recent play here, uh, which is a game that uh, everybody screams about and. This game is the most hyped game so far. I think so, at least this year. And it's uh, Tapestry. No, it's Tapestry. Oh. Tapestry is a okay. yeah. <laughs> I think I think Tapestry owns the uh, owns the tr trophy for for bigger hype and controversy and so on. So so as you as you might know, I think everybody knows Tapestry is it it says it's a civilization game. I would say it's a civilization theme game. Uh, which doesn't really matter for me. I mean, like, it's it's like a tradition game, so I still feel like building up something. But it's it's a little bit of an ab abstractish game where you are uh, moving uh, on those different tracks, trying to get uh, different benefits of those tracks and build yourself up on the map and also build yourself up on your personal um, capital place, here where you get those special buildings but it's it's more like a uh just uh, filling the grids and trying to get the uh rows and columns in order to get extra points and resources in order to move further on the tracks so it's a track moving game kind of kind of like that so i kind of get the picture of that but basically you are also building up this a small world over here, uh, putting uh, down your pieces. It's it's a very peaceful game. There's not much interaction. I mean, like it's not like you go and you conquer someone else. It's it do. says uh, it you, you kind of do. Yeah, it <laughs> says conquer, but I mean, it, you just you just roll dice and you conquer that person anyway, unless he has a trap. Then he plays a trap. Then then he kind of conquers you on his own space. So it's it's all like abstractish, but basically what you're trying to do, you're trying to expand on uh, on those different uh, islands and things in order to get the resources. And you can you always roll the dice and you get the extra resources. And you move on those various tracks, and you also get those technology cards, which you move up, kind of upgrading them and getting more resources or more buildings. So it's all about you know getting going further, upgrading, 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 and so on. So it's never ending upgrading. So that's that's how this game is in a nutshell. But um, my first play, uh, to be honest, my first play was kind of frustrating because I did I didn't do well. I uh, I was I fell behind the other two players. So like I think the, the point difference was more than hundred points oh. with both of these players. <laughs> so I was like eighty points and they were like two hundred something. Like, so I was like oh, whatever. But I, I did I did few major mistakes. Though there are those tapestry cards as well. Yeah, there are those tapestry cards, and they are they're kind of random, and some of them are situationally more better than the others. And there's also that uh, science die that you roll when you move on that science track sometimes. Uh, but it's all kind of like like push your luck thing, and I like how that games uh, give me that kind of a situational thing and i need to manage that i need to deal with that situation right now and i felt like it was a miserable play for me because <laughs> i did wrong moves because i was wrong okay. at some point of the game i felt like this wasn't like the game was driving me yeah like people are saying this game is too random it's uh you cannot do anything you can get bad cards and that's it then you will lose the game it wasn't about that it wasn't me getting the bad cards that much than just me doing some poor decisions. Uh, and I can totally see that this, this game rewards uh, extra plays in order to understand how to, how to you know get the flow going, how to get your engine going and get more resources because resources is the main thing here. Resources give you everything. 
movement on the tracks and the other stuff basically yeah resources are your turns that's how I say it. that's yep. yeah that's how i say it so i like tapestry and i feel like i want to play it again now knowing what to do and i like those building stuff uh, like those little buildings that you build in your on your capital board those little buildings they they open up those spaces for the income and if you ignore them you lose if you ignore one of the tracks you lose because all the tracks are connected to each other at least in my opinion like i i totally neglected the um the military track and i wasn't expanding on the board the others were quite much and they were getting those extra resources to boost mm -hmm. themselves and i was trapped eventually because i didn't have enough resources and i couldn't couldn't get like much further because it was harder for me to start moving on that military track so yeah i i just did some really stupid mistakes one thing i want to say is that in this game factions are somewhat unbalanced they are but it's still fun i don't know i just yeah. One thing I did right away before our first game, I just took away. Uh, I took away the futurists or whatever they are. Fut futurists. Oh, they're so much whatever. fun. Yeah, but but they're like they seem to be overpowered, and then I just took took it away, and and we played with like we chose the other two stations, and it was fun. All those yeah. two stations that we had were kind of balanced for me, but I can totally see some of them are not. So I have to play it again. Actually. I quite like, you know, I, I, I find the futurists to have the most interesting use of balance, just because since they start so far ahead, they have to have, the, they start really far ahead, but they don't get the benefits of those first three spaces, which is where you get a lot of your, um, those buildings out on the map. And so I find that they have a, that they have, they, they have a big burst and then they kind of fizzle out, which I have found, I, I find that to be an interesting way to balance something. But anyway, I, I played ta Tapestry a lot of times by this point and quite enjoy it. Did you end up getting those clips for the bases? No, no. Um, okay. I have to get them through through you because it's, um, I think it's US okay. thing there. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, they're, they're quite nice. <laughs> they make the game a lot better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when, I come, when I come in January, so yeah. I just okay. get them and then... Get you, yeah. That, I, I, I totally felt it like, um, I, I wasn't bothered by that. Um, that, that, that the buildings don't fit exactly into those spots, I wasn't bothered that because they're so huge anyway. And I kind of, if that, I don't know, it, okay. it didn't bother me, all right, at least for now. Uh, what and by the way, um, I know they are extremely overproduced, and but it, it looks so cool. It looks it like a capital city, and people don't understand that. I know that it's overproduced; that you you could get some smaller buildings or unpainted and whatever, but it looks so great. And when you're finished, to like you look at your capital build, capital city, and you feel like it, it's a capital city. Mm -hmm. And I and I want to have fun with the game, having the kind of a visual aspect of a great visual aspect of it as well. So yeah, so yeah, that's that. Anyway. Tapestry, uh, which uh, has a lot of controversy based on the ratings and things and unbalances. By the way, there's a um, small sheet that came out from uh, Stormwind Games that balances out some of the factions. If you know about okay. that, it came out in November and they like they put out the official kind of a errata for some of the civilizations. You have to look it up on the website. They have the official thing there. Yeah, okay. All right. So, your next recent play. My next recent play is an odd game. This is a, a game that I was somewhat excited for uh, last year when we did our Essen episode, if you remember. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to come out last year, and then it, of course, did not. This is a uh, a weird game called Soviet Kitchen. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you played it? No. Okay. <laughs> So it's a cooperative game where essentially what you have are a bunch of cards with various things that you could, I guess, eat, usually if you wanted to die. And then the and the cards, I've got an example. Yeah. The cards have this, this code on the back, and so you hold it over your phone and scan it. And each card has kind of a color. 
like you know the sand is a certain color and a, and a kind of a toxicity level which is this number up here and so the, the game will tell you which dish you're trying to make like you're trying to make a sausage and it'll show you the color of the sausage and then from playing the cards from your hand you're trying to combine those colors to get as close as possible to that sausage color you know or whatever else you're making and there's some of the cards have special abilities which are a little bit disruptive uh but but mostly that's what you're doing is playing a couple yeah. of cards and matching a sausage i mean the game has some sound effects which make it kind of you know silly and you, if you get close to the color, then you get more points. If you get really far away, if you don't get anywhere close, then your customer leaves because what you served him is not what he ordered. And you can also build up toxicity. And if you get too high on the toxicity level, then the customer dies. And, you know, each level has a, a certain number of customers you can, you, you've got to keep alive. And if you don't, then you lose the round. Otherwise, you'll, you'll win. And there's sort of a story that you're going through. It's hmm. a fun game. It's a, a silly game. It's very light on rules. Uh, I don't know that it will shake anybody's world, but it's small enough to travel easily. It works well alone, but I've also played it with you know, two, in sets of two, three, and four, and there's not really any downtime. I mean, you're just choosing a card from your hand and playing it. You're not supposed to show the colors to each other, but it's just interesting to see how you know you think that colors are going to work, and then how they work in the game. I don't know much about color theory or anything at all, but I don't know. I find it. I find it charming. Hmm. Yeah. 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 It's sounds. It's not. It's not push your luck, is it? No, it's not push your luck. You're. You're just try. You're, it's. It's all about combining colors. And there's no. You know. And you're always going to put in the same number of ingredients with. One player, that's two ingredients. With two players, it's two ingredients. With three players, it's three ingredients. So you, you've you've one per player, unless you're playing solo, in which case you put in two. And uh -huh, uh -huh. Right, so there's no right. push your luck at all. It's it's just it's all about combining colors to to make a target, with very little information other than how the color appears to you. Okay, okay. That's I suspect yeah. it's not colorblind friendly. <laughs> but, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know that that would be possible. <laughs> yeah, if you combine colors, yeah, yeah that's, that's a thing. But yeah, it sounds it sounds interesting. It sounds like a small, fun game. You, you play somewhere outside with a bunch of friends. You you get around. Uh, it's it's suggested not to play it outside because apparently things can interfere with the processing. You're supposed to play it inside. But <laughs> uh huh, I see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right so this is uh soviet kitchen all right so mm -hmm. my recent play another one is the one i talked about the so basically my desired play evolved into the recent play if you remember oh. i talked about the uh, abomination abomination uh the hair the of hair frankenstein, frankenstein. Mm -hmm. yes yes so abomination is a um um it's not a weird game it's it's a really nice game. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it doesn't have the okay. nicest theme if you think about it thematically. But the Abomination is is a worker placement game, like yes, many others, like for example, Lords of Waterdeep. But 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 the theme and how you do stuff, and it's kind of like Lords of Waterdeep with uh, with the expansion already, and how you manage those resources is a little bit different. So. You also kind of collect cubes, yeah? You collect cubes as resources. But you're trying to build up your... Build your own Frankenstein, yeah? Monster and so on. And you are digging for different human parts and, and going to the hospital and uh, going to execution to get fresh body parts and so on. So, And you put those cubes on those different um, tracks where it, it, it shows... Um, how, how, do you, how do you say about that one? It's like a different... Uh, I don't Freshness remember. tracks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so basically yeah. that. Yeah, so it, it decays and so on, so you lose your resources if you don't use them right away, but if you use the older resources, then you get less points and so on, so you balance that out. So it's very strategic game, in my opinion. It gives me a lot of um, um, moments to think about so where do I go, what do I do, and a lot of blocking is going on, but there's that cool mechanic 
of uh, kind of a pushing the others of the board. You mm -hmm. have to pay them, but you can get the spot. And there's only a certain amount of pushes you can do, which is also really cool. So you kind of do it all the time by paying people some money because maybe you have a lot of money at some point. So I, I like that. It doesn't block you totally. And building those body parts and charging them and trying to get them alive and so on. And, and at the same time, managing those three different tracks of your humanity and like expertise and, and the other one, which uh, basically those different tracks, uh, they are needed in order for you to to do better things. So, so in order for you to roll better dice, you need to have better expertise and you also get more points at the end of the game. In order to get more workers, you need to get more reputation because more people come to work for you and so on. And those different... Uh, the, the one thing I was bothered by are, the, are, are those special abilities that I didn't really like. They were not that interesting. Some of them felt kind of overpowered. The abilities weren't that balanced for me, the, the special abilities of, of characters that you play. That's the only thing. But everything else, it felt really, really cool. It's a different theme. It's kind of Lords of Warity, but with a cool twist with those different tracks and resources like going away and so on. Some are, some are not, like bones and so on. You can freeze them, uh, you charge your things and so on. I like that. I like that very much. Kind of a building up, engine building, straightforward worker placement. And the only issue I have, yeah, the only issue I have, that, uh, um, I mean, not the only issue, the other issue I have, one, one was the unbalanced character abilities, but the other one I have is the uh, length of the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes. it, it is. It's extremely long. So that's why I want to try the Igor, Igor variant. I, I didn't play with the Igor variant because I was playing oh. the game and it was a little bit like some of the players were not into into heavier games. And this this one is like a little bit like on a heavier side. Mm -hmm. All the different spaces and rules. Uh, it's not that difficult. But on the other hand, there's just a lot of them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this... Took us a while to to learn, and um, I like another it. while to play. <laughs> yes, and a bigger while to play. Yes, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I, I liked it. I, I want to give it another chance with Eager Ryan, mm -hmm. because yeah. if if the Eager Ryan will not help out the, the 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 feel of of the game dragging a ton and being like you know really hard to 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 grasp, really hard to go through, then this game won't be my collection anymore, so. <laughs> well, I think you'll find that it does. Uh, really, all it does is, so I mean, I, I think the, the variant take it does two things that are good. It, it takes uh, some time off the game. It takes about, about three rounds out, which is about right. Even and four. It also, yeah, yeah. Four, okay. And then it also uh, changes the die results a little bit so that if you get that, that broken heart die result, you can use that as an alive. It's an optional. It's an option. You can either pay the cost and make your part come alive, or you can ignore it. And it makes it a little bit easier to get your. Um, it gives you a little bit more opportunities to sort of change the luck of the dice uh, a bit in in a couple mm -hmm. other ways too. So I think I think it's overall a good variant that I would probably almost use always. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like so. this, this is the one for me. So we're going to see about that. We're going to see how it uh, rolls. So so that's that. So that's my second recent play. And then we're okay. going to go into the other topic, which is a desired play. And desired play is yeah, it's all about the game that you really, really, really want to get to the table. It might be the future game that is going to come out in a few months. It might be a Kickstarter game you're waiting for. It might be an older game. It might be a game that's just sitting next to you and you just want to open the box. That's the one. <laughs> so, um, Kyle, yours. Well, I look around and all I see are desired plays. Um, <laughs> I, I think I, I've got so many new games that it's hard to come up with one. But I, I think the one that I would pick right now is, a, is Aquatica. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cosmodrome games, yeah? 
yep, it's this undersea game. I don't know much about it yet. I've, I've opened it up, but I haven't even made it through the rules yet. I did sort the little manta rays into different piles, but it just looks like the kind of game that I usually enjoy, where you've got sort of building your, you're playing your cards and using the various special abilities and trying to upgrade those. And I, it's a pretty game, and the artwork looks good. I can't Abyss. speak much to it, but I, I think... I think I'm going to enjoy this one, and I hope that uh, I won't have to wait much longer before I have a chance to play it. Yeah, it looks really cool. It's uh, from the uh, no, it's it's really cool that like um, there are there's that one Russian company that kind of a uh, start to uh, come on that level of of design, which which uh, more folks from around the world appreciate their their first game, Smartphone Inc., which I. One I get, still yeah. I'm, I'm still I'm still waiting or looking for a copy. At some point I'm gonna get that because like doing I, I like I like economy games with cool themes like for example yeah doing your smartphone uh, that's a really cool theme for me at least. So yeah. and this is like simple diving deep strategies. No, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, I, I think it looks like a lot of fun. This one was has been a little bit easier to find than smartphone was. That one, if you didn't get it right when it came out, you just don't have it right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but so I, I kind of jumped when I saw an opportunity to order Aquatica, uh, mostly mm -hmm. because I felt sad that I didn't get to play the smartphone game. Oh, Although we could play it on the cruise. But... Yeah. It seems like they are also... Um republishing some things in Russian like escape tales or anything but first contact I see is it is it there and skytopia and followers these are all like the the the, the new releases that is it there first contacts a russian game is it i think that might actually be one of theirs because i know my i asked my friend in st petersburg to go to the game yeah. store and look for it but he only found it there in russian so <laughs> yeah yeah so this is this is the one that people are talking about, Skytopia is coming, which is beautiful, and followers. So this company is, look at that. It's, I mean, like, this company knows how to sell the game based on how they look. <clears throat> this is just an amazing cover. Wow, I just saw that one. That followers. Maybe I should do it as my desire play now. <laughs> well, there you go. No, but anyway, yeah. Um, let's, uh, we're off the... Wait, yeah, I, I went off the track with this, but yeah, followers. Anyway, um, so let's go to my recent play, and though, by the way, I want to I play Aquatic as well, so let's do that on the cruise, definitely. My desired play is Atlantis Rising, which is also a kind of a similar theme, kind of. Okay. Kind of, I mean, like, it's not about diving, but it's, <laughs> it's about the opposite of diving, isn't it? <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's more drowning. But, mm -hmm. um, so I, I chose the second edition because I, I've played the first edition of that game and I like the idea, I like the kind of a push your luck with, with worker placement, which is really <clears throat> cool, unique. But I, I saw this one, I looked at this one, like, how it looks. It looks much better. Uh, they have kind of a repaired the game. You know, they have fixed all the. They have fixed the issues. It seems the game had, and made it into an even better game. And that's where I, I, I really like the whole idea. But there were some problems I had with the game, and now it seems like they fixed those problems, which means that I might love that game. And that's Atlantis mm -hmm. Rising. It's it's a cooperative percussion game. You are uh, pushing a lock, putting your meeples on those different tracks, and getting the resources. You have to roll the dice as well to get those, and you're getting different technologies. You're trying to build up and kind of a uh, flee this uh, sinking island of Atlantis and so on. But other things start bothering you, and the island starts sinking, and you turn over those different tiles yeah, as they sink and so on. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I played the original one, and I, I wasn't as impressed with the original one as many people were. Uh, but I am going to give the new one a try when it when it comes out. I, I was impressed with the uh, with the idea. I mean, yeah, 
it just <laughs> wasn't wasn't like totally it balanced out. Uh, <laughs> no, I, how to say? I mean, like it seems like it needed more development, more playtesting, and that's what probably this this edition is. It's it's like fully developed at Lines Rising. Yeah. So we'll see about that. So that's my right. design play, Lens Rising Second Edition. All right, yeah. so uh, we're going to go to the next topic, which is, and let, let, let me just go away from that screen sharing over here. And this is a Guess That Game. Okay. Which is a game about Guess That Game. So we're going to... We're gonna, give so hints. <laughs> we're gonna give hints to each other. Um, talk about the specific games, and we try to guess that game. <laughs> okay. You first, Kyle. All right. My first game is a uh, a game about transportation and traffic management. Uh, on the uh, underground. No, it's not that one. It's a different game about transportation and traffic management. Okay. Uh, this game involves trying to get from point A to point B. Literally. Bus? No, although I do have the new bus. But, hmm. uh, but no, it's not that one. Uh, this is a game in which this is essentially... Uh, a group roll and write game where you all write on the same board. Group roll and write. You write on the same board. Mm -hmm. You literally write. Write. You, on the you same literally board. write on the same board. You've got one large board and you all write on it. Oh, I just don't know it. Probably. It's a Japanese game. Oh, it's a Tokyo Highway thing. No. No. <laughs> Sounds like you haven't played Tokyo Highway. <laughs> That's a game where you build a highway out of popsicle sticks. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, yeah I haven't played. <laughs> so, uh, well, seems, maybe seems... you won't get it. It's called uh, Let's Make a Bus Route. Let's Make a Bus Route? I know mm -hmm. nothing about that one, sadly. Oh, it's adorable. It's it's one that you might like. It's it's just it's interesting because you're playing. It's the only roll and write that I know of where you are all on the same board and you've all got you, you just flip the you're not rolling you're flipping cards but and each person's you know the, the purple card for one person might be different than the purple card for another person so if you flip purple you look at your board and it shows you what kind of thing you're drawing and if you go around or you can you don't block each other but if you try if you have to go on a route that someone else has already gone on you take hmm. traffic points and okay. traffic points end up being negative at the end so it's 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 short um hmm. it's it's fun it's 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 a charming game and it's an interesting idea and japanese games tend to be that so i've been i've been quite impressed with this one i've never heard about this one oh, well, <laughs> but look, well perhaps perhaps i should show it to you sometime <laughs> it it looks bad it looks really bad but it does but kind of not. fun kind of kind of fun it's it's quirky and it's fast and it's delightful yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure this kind of a you know roll and write, but kind of you know, but but building building up on, on this kind of a central board sharing spaces. Yeah, that's that might that might be cool. Yeah, all right, all right. So my guess the game game is in a small box. In a small box, is it box of rocks? No. Okay. Even lit even literally, but uh, this game has uh, both cards and dice. Cards and dice. Mm. It isn't that Age of War, is it? No. Ugh, good. All right. <laughs> okay. So um, in this game, you move on the. On on the tracks. It's not cribbage, is it? No. <laughs> but I'm sure you're gonna get it now. Uh, this game has planets. Is it dice stars? No. 
Uh, the last one I'm going to give you. This okay. game is a part of a series of games in a small box. Oh, is it um, Tiny Epic Galaxies? It is, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was emphasizing on, you know, small box, cards and dice. That's yeah. basically what this game is. I was is going somewhere from. else. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So your next guess that game? My next guess that game is a game in which you're trying to, well, it is a game in which you're trying to set up yourself for for what you need while at the same time not setting up other people mm. <laughs> hmm so it should be kind of like push a lock like there abyss push your luck uh well it's not abyss but there is some push your luck in it but that's not i don't know it doesn't feel like a true push your luck game okay uh, this is a game where you are trying to Manage uh, the placement of certain objects. Manage the placements of certain objects is like a dexterity game. Uh, is it the um, those polyominoes games like patchwork? No. no. This those objects that you're managing the placement of in this game are animals. Oh, uh, animal upon animal with. How, how, uh, uh, I think you, I think you might be going down a different path. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, uh, Meeple Circus. No, 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 no. no. Um, I'll point out I have not said that this is a dexterity game. You came up with that on your own. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, this is the game that uh, won a major gaming award a few years ago, but seems kind of to have faded into the background. Major animals on boards? No, that's not the one. No. Hmm. This game involves the creation of a zoo. Oh, it's a, no, it's bar, not Baron Park or something like that. Baron <laughs> Park. No. No. Creation of a All zoo. Right. The last oh. one. Zuloreto. There we go. It is all right. So, what was the last? <laughs> I one did not say to? it was a dexterity game. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've never played Zoloreto. I just know about that one, but okay. I've never played it. So, what's what's the? I feel what's I the last? It was fair. <laughs> no, 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 it's totally fine. What what's the last clue that you? I was going to talk about if you have enough animals and enough room, you'll breed, but that wouldn't help me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least <laughs> I'm playing, but yeah, I know about Zoloreto, so. Do you stack animals okay. there? No. Just said, oh, this is nothing different. Okay. You're trying to organize the way that things fit together. You've got to have enough room for your animals. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Got it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with stacking. I guess you do stack the, the, the tiles on a little truck, but if they fall down, you just pick them up and put them back on. <laughs> All right. So my next guess that game is a role selection game. Is it Citadels? No. Okay. This game has uh, plastic ships. Is it... Um, were there plastic ships in that game? Uh, in Libertalia? No. No. no, no. Okay. Uh, you, in this game, you produce resources to get points. Like, literally. That's all they do. So every game... Yeah, but I mean, like, this game okay. is literally resources equals points, like, something like that. Re role selection, resources, and points, and plastic ships. It's not dawning on me. All right. The, the, with the next one, I think you're going to get this. Um, uh, this game is also a deck building game. No? I'm, I'm afraid I'm having trouble today. <laughs> I'm the same. So, but this game also has a follow action. It might be it might be named differently. I'm going to be angry when I don't get it. Um, it's not Puerto Rico. 
No, but you okay. kind of like kind of there, but it's not really that. Uh, the, the last okay, we're gonna give you the last one. It's a it's a space themed game. Is it Race for the Galaxy? No, but you were kind of okay, close. Well. You were kind of close. So anyway, uh, it's Eminent Domain. Oh, okay. All that's right. what, well. yeah. The plastic ships, that's where, that's what differentiates it. You said ships and I went to the other kind. But that's oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Usually plastic ships for me, it's it's always like, like you know, the, the uh, Gallic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Okay. All right, so that's, uh, I guess, that game. Yeah, we uh, and that's, failed. Let's make a bus route. Yes, <laughs> we failed miserably. <laughs> miserably. We did. Um, but anyway, we're going to go to the next topic, which is what's on Kickstarter. And we're going to talk about a game that we chose for that topic. Kyle, you first. All right. Uh, the game I'm most excited about on Kickstarter right now is Stronghold Undead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Stronghold a lot, and I have the Undead original one, but I, uh, you know, it, it, I, I've not been, I've been worried that it wouldn't work well with the new Stronghold, and so I'm excited to see the second one coming out. It's more Stronghold. I mean, uh, if you like Stronghold, this is a great addition to it. It gives you other character, I mean, other kinds of invaders, other kinds of actions, other kinds of special abilities. And mm -hmm. it just changes the game a little bit while still being kind of the same game. If you don't like Stronghold, either because you don't like that kind of game or you don't like two-player only games or you don't like really long two-player only games, this won't really change your opinion on it. But if you do like it, it's, uh, it's, it's a great way to play Stronghold and it adds a lot to it. I found the original Undead to be a fantastic addition to the game. And I'm sure that the new Undead will be a fantastic addition to the revamped edition that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, I I think we had the original Stronghold, like not the, even the second edition. I think like you had the, the second edition. If you, I, I think you got that one through me. Or we had the second point. edition. You had the second. The, the original Stronghold's pretty old. Oh, yeah, yeah. We tried to play it. Yeah, it wasn't. It was it's yeah, like it's a little bit too heavy. For two Stronghold game. is a game you have to be taught. It's, yeah, it's a difficult one to pick up and learn. Yeah, and it yeah. It, it, it is a large, long, intense two-player game, and if you don't play it with someone who has played it before, it's going to be a bit of a rough sell, just because that whole the invader player is going to set the pace, and learning how to set the pace is very in, is an interesting learning experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sixty-five dollars for a usual version, and then the deluxe version, which has kind of a those enhanced maples things. Yeah, and, and well, and I think it has invader maples, which is something that's always been a complaint: is that the invaders are little cubes you pull out of a bag, and not when I say little cubes, they're minuscule cubes. I mean, if you blew on them, they would all fly away. So I'm hoping the Invader meeples are a decent size so that they're not as tiny as, as they, they have been. And then I think it's also coming with the ability to get invader meeples for the original ones. Oh, these are the, the ones. Original stronghold as well. Yeah. Now, I, but that doesn't really show you the size there. I'm yeah. sure that's, that, that box in the background is not for comparative purposes. I mean, I don't <laughs> know if you remember, but the cubes in the, in the original one yeah. or the upgraded one are just the tiniest cubes. I mean, it looks like somebody... Yeah. Took Chopped scissors the... to a small cube and cut it into a bit of pieces. Yeah, yeah, that that was like a one four one third of the original cube thing. I don't know it was really small. It looked like a half of that. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's uh, Sean Cole's second condition on there, which is a uh, standalone. Yeah, I think thing. you can play it. I think you can play it standalone, or you can mix it in. Mm -hmm. And I have always mixed it in. But there are vampires in it, and those are more exciting than goblins. True, true, yes, yeah, <laughs> always. <laughs> All right, so um, my 
pick for the Kickstarter game is a game that's based on the video game. And I just wanted to show it because it's interesting that they took this video game. Uh, Divinity, uh, the uh, original Sin. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. So uh, Divinity Original Sin, um, this is a very popular video game, uh, which is like a storytelling game, big sort of RPG thing, tactical combat, and so on. So basically it has those cool things like you are going to combine with different powers and you're trying to use environment in order to cast your spells and things. So so that's that's the video game. And so in this one, this I don't know how it's like... I don't know if it's any good, but um, it's a video game as a board game. So it might be a good mm -hmm. uh, starting point for those who want to experience board games, but are video gamers and are afraid that board games are going to be not as fun. So it might be, might be something there. But of course, it's it's quite um, not quite. It's it's very expensive. So <laughs> so, but this one has like. As you can see, um, they have the characters and uh, some of different stuff, and and the miniatures, and you know those bosses, and blah blah. And you know, you can see those like a ton of different things going on. All right, as it sees, and it it's already at six hundred thousand dollars and. Mm. So, but there's the cool. You basically, as you can see, you choose your path. There's a storytelling going on. Uh, you explore different locations, you fight enemies, usual stuff, you know. It's not nothing really, um, uh, nothing really special, you know, based on, on the, the first three. But cool part about that one is the using of the elements. So, like it says, you can you can make a monster wet, and then the other player will cast a an ice spell to freeze it, and then you can, you know. Okay. Kill the uh, kill the monster more easily and so on. So you use like those different elements of nature in order to you know uh, do the spells more efficiently, and that's a cool part. That that's what I feel like could be uh, like doing combos and things. That may be a nice mm -hmm. nice thing going on. So that's that's a nice touch to that, and it's also yeah. a chronicle system where you make those different achievement things and so on. So it's a little bit like the. Uh, uh, Legacy of Dragon Holds thing going on here, mm -hmm. so that's that's that. So, don't know if it's any good. It's extremely expensive. I'm not sure it's totally worth the money, but still showing people that there is yeah. now a popular video game as a board game. All right. So, that's that. We're gonna see what happens. Divinity, original sin, the board game, and uh, now we are into. The final topic of the day, which is, do you know that, Kyle? I do know. What is it? Our top ten underrated games. Yes. Oh wait, I I prepared the other. Li oh no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so this is yeah, this is underrated games. Um. So you yeah. want to tell me what you did here? <laughs> You know, I, I I don't. It's hard to know when when something's underrated. It's sort of a matter of perception here. So, I just went through the games that I like, and the ones that people don't ever really talk about. I don't hear many people talking about, at least here, or when I sort of bring them to a game day, they kind of get overlooked, and people, are, oh, let's may, maybe not, or games that I feel like I'm the only person in the world who likes or plays. I, I don't know that I really had a methodology. It's just sort of how I feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I kind of went from there. So I, I went to a, I went to Board Game Geek to look at the games I, I really like and rated highly. And I, I went to to look at the at, at the ratings. Uh, sorry, at, at, the, at the ranking on Board Game mm -hmm. Geek. So and I thought like there are a few games that I, I like I love. You know, like Empire Stage of Discovery, which is like six hundred on Board Game Geek. But I mean, like, it's a matter of taste, and I still feel that 600 is a, is a very high rating or ranking, let's say. So I, I try to stay away from the games that, you know, that, that are on the edge, 
of of kind of a being underrated maybe because of my own personal very personal taste and i went with the games that are ranked thousands at 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 the at, at the ranking of thousand or thousand plus you know so i and i went from there and of course not the new games because the new games are just getting those ratings and they are the the ratings are adjusted as more people play them so no basically really new games so it was a nice touch to look at the older games mm -hmm. and i rated them highly and i feel they don't deserve uh, to have a ranking of of a thousand plus so that's okay where we went from so yours had a bit more method to it but that's all right <laughs> yeah i tried to figure out because there are so many games i feel like they are underrated but you know it's sometimes it's more of a personal uh very personal taste rather than you know trying to think objectively but it's really hard to think yeah. ob objectively because you love those games so. yeah that's true anyway let's go to number 10. so kyle you're number 10. my number 10 is an older game it's a game that I don't know if it really ever came out in English, although, I mean, I think my version is a German version. Uh, it is called Palaces of Carrara. Mm -hmm. I uh, it's, anything. I mean, it was, it was kind of, I think it was nominated for one of the German game awards at one point, but I don't see it anymore. It's, I've got my copy. I've brought it a few times and nobody's ever really given it a second thought. It's an interesting game where you've got this wheel and you pull blocks out of the bag and put them on this wheel and then the wheel turns and the blocks get cheaper and so you can take you can take more essentially if you wait longer. So there's a nice little bit of pushing push, pushing one's luck in it uh, hoping that you can get this thing around before somebody else takes it and then you're building things and the the better you build the more points they'll be worth or the more money it'll be worth and you'll get various points by making different sets and different combinations. The game came with a bunch of expansion modules in the box, uh, many of which I haven't played just because they're in German and people here don't speak German, so I don't have anybody to play them with. But I've played with some of them, and they're quite interesting. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know where it falls in an objective rating scale, but in terms of how I see it perceived, it's it's got a lot there, and it's kind of underrated it's one where every time i get it out i'm like oh i wish i played this more mm -hmm. based on how many german games you love you should just you know do my go top live, 10 go live games. in germany yeah uh, well <laughs> <laughs> you should i do have to i do have to have a job so that i can earn money to buy these games i'm sure your german is enough to to find a job as well <laughs> no uh, yes isn't? but i don't think they need very much arisa council in germany Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, true that. So you just stay in in US. Then, all right. So Rondell mechanic here. Okay. Not all right. So, just more of this wheel. Oh, I see. I see. But yeah, I know nothing about this game. You it's, might it's like a, it. It's it's it's, a it's dry German. German Euro game. Oh, that's what I love. Usually, I. Uh, Sometimes when I, I, I think about the desired play we're going to do for for a podcast, for a vidcast, I was like, I'm always like, I want to talk about that German dry euro, but I'm not going to, you know, so, <laughs> no, 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 German euros, they're, they're fine, some of them are fine. Anyway, so uh, my number 10 is a game where you are planting crop and then watering things and then trying to grow vegetables and that's garden dice and uh garden dice you can see is is ranked 2032 which is quite low and the rating isn't the best as well and i can see some people having a few problems with the game but i really like that game because in this game you are so planting those different vegetables the seeds first and there's the bird that can eat those seeds but you're trying to to grow the vegetables and do the chain reactions by watering those vegetables and you know those different channels they go through you know and it's a nice game with a fair amount of take that in my opinion because of that bird and and the rabbit and so on so the bird eats the seeds the the rabbit eats the vegetables and so you need to manage your your watering and things really carefully 
So I, I like that. So, and you also roll dice, and based on that, that's where you place those different vegetables, and there'll be kind of a not push your luck, but you know, a randomizer that adds to to the fun of the game. So that's garden dice. Yeah, I like it. I, I mean, it, it, it's charming. It is. I, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's charming. Of course, yeah, you can see those kind of like a set collection thing where you can get more points. So that's my number 10, Garden Dice. Okay. So your number nine. My number nine is uh, a game came out a while ago. It's, uh, it's, it's an early version of a deck builder. Okay. It was an early version of a deck builder using bags instead of cards. And it's a game called Puzzle Strike, Bag of Chips. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, a sort of an in-your-face little deck building game where you were trying to fill up somebody's board with uh, with with penalty chips uh, and combine your own to sort of make bigger ones so that you could knock them down. And, and it had some issues if you played with more than two players because you were only able, able to interact with one person. But as a two-player game, it was fantastic. And you got all these special abilities that did different things and I, I really had a lot of fun with it. It's a high quality game. It was, I, I just really like it, but I think it's kind of vanished. And it's one that I think I kind of always got the sense that I was the only person who liked it. <laughs> Seems so, so, yeah. But I, I found it delightfully charming. And okay. I feel that it's a bit underrated. I think if, if you play it as a two player game, it's a lot of fun. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's something I have never tried and never played, but something that might be interesting to just, you know, just try. Well, I was Nothing. cleaning my closet and found that I had three copies of it, so if you need one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll totally take it and then give it a good try because it, it sounds fun, you know, as a two-player game especially. It is. It's, it's also really heavy. <laughs> the box is extremely heavy, but... I don't know. It's it's good. They they came out with an expansion, but the expansion went all of nowhere. I mean, I have mm -hmm. a copy, but I just sort of fizzled out, and then I just don't hear about this anymore. Okay. All right. So that's your number nine puzzle strike. It is. My number nine is a game about um, if you have seen uh, Storage Wars and such uh, on TV, then you probably know about World Wars as a board game. So it's mm -hmm. like a fantasy theme, Storage Wars, and I really like this game. It's ranked, as you can see, not that well. It's it's uh, 2038, and I feel like this game deserves a little bit more because it's really fun to kind of a bluff and push your luck uh, by you know bidding for the different vaults. So so you're basically um, you're you're given those different vaults, and you are auctioning those vaults and you can see some of the cards and some other players then can see some of the cards in that vault but you never see everything and you're starting bi start bidding on those different vaults and mm -hmm. uh, they have mostly junk but sometimes really cool gems and equipment and things that give you points in the game or you can sell them to get more money and it's all about this micromanagement of of when to bid and when to bluff and when to not and and you know it it's it's so much fun to kind of uh, anticipate a great hand and then get a lot of junk it's it's fun to fail in this game at least for me like mm -hmm. fail in auction by getting something not so cool but those different walls <laughs> they have different um, abilities on them the only problem I have with this game, why it's not like higher on my list, because like I rank the games based on kind of how much I like them, but it's it, it they can vary. I mean, like it's it's not a you know uh, carved into a stone list like thing. Like <laughs> oh, I like this game much more than the other one. They're all kind of the same. I like them all very much, like personally. But but in uh, this game, I I feel like this game lacks more variability. And thus, the replayability is also, also suffers. I would like to have more cards, more different worlds. So I don't know. It just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm sad that this game doesn't have any any, any following expansions or anything like that. Yeah. You know, support. 
and so on because th this is a, a really cool a different game that fits in a small box and gives a lot of play and a lot of love at least uh, for us in our in our group so that one fits course. well for you because i sometimes feel like you're the only person who likes that game so <laughs> yeah that's the, what this is all about exactly kinda, that's a perfect kinda. one for your list anyway number eight my number eight is an older game. Uh, it's sort of a bidding game. Uh, it's uh, called Diamonds Club. Mm -hmm. And it's one that I don't even own a copy of. I went out of my way to get it for a friend uh, and then gave it to the friend. And if I want to play it, I'll play it with that friend. But uh, this is a, it's a delightful little game where you're sort of building your, your park and you're using these coins and you're putting them out there to sort of claim different things. It's a game I haven't played in a while, and it's a game that didn't have super wide distribution, at least over here. But it's it's one that every time I've played it is is really just always worked. I've played it with these friends, then I found it another place and played it again. Uh, it's it's just a, a great little old game. I, I don't know how much what what else to say, but you're trying to collect the different colors of diamonds and trying to fill your park as, po as much as possible, and the game kind of ends once he ends up crossing that river there in the middle. Uh, it's it's one that I just don't know that I've heard anyone talk about except this <laughs> the small group of people that I know around here that play it. But it's, it's really a, a well-designed game that works well every time it comes out. The rules are super simple, and I quite like it. It looks cool. I like the art on this one and the pieces ends. It's it's so oh, yeah, it's well. Got these fun coin, these fun sort of plasticky coins that are just yeah. a little bit too big, and and so they're fun to play with. I don't. It, it's it's a good game. I don't know what's. I, I just don't think it ever got the the distribution it needed, and so it's kind of been ignored. Yeah, I kind of know nothing about this game, but it's really adorned. So a nice designer, at least. It seems. So, uh, my number eight is a game from Lodical. It's called Four Gods. And it's another game that you might say that only I'm talking about. And it's not yeah. it's not <laughs> really a highly rated game. It's 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 a middle road. Uh, it's four thousand three hundred and two uh, rank. Uh, but I mean I, I kind of see why why people don't like this game, but I do. I, I like this game, and it's uh, like they say it's a kind of like Carcassonne, not on steroids, but but like a speedy Carcassonne and so all that. Yeah, you're building up those different lands and islands, putting down those different um, priests. They're not cultists; mm -hmm. I think they're priests, and putting down the cities and it's it's a puzzle game but it's a real-time puzzle game and it's not about like the clock is ticking like in an escape room game or something like that it's just real time you are all working on this central board together which i really like as you say like let's make a route bus route you know it's the same i, I like i like the idea of of doing things together in the middle but everyone trying to get his own benefit out of that and you're building those different lands and you can borrow the um the tiles of the others. The only thing that bothers me is um, like that you can take the tiles of others, which is still a bit too much hassle. But <laughs> everything else, I like building up. I like putting those different uh, priests and trying to kind of uh, see where the others are putting them so you can kind of uh, take points away from them and so on. So it's, it's perception and, you know, not only speed. You need to do it smartly. It's, it's not all about just putting out the tiles as, as fast as possible and trying to fit the exact tile so it can fit into this exact thing over here with with yeah, matching the terrain and so on. It's just a cool game and it is fun. It is fun not for everyone, but at least for me, if, you <laughs> like, if you're fine with the speedy games, if you like the puzzle of tile laying, try it. It's really cool to be exact. So. Okay. Four gods. All right. So your number seven. My number seven is a game that 
I have on my shelf. I can see it right here. Uh, it. Uh, I don't know if, if, if it was just hard to get, but for a while, I thought I was <clears> the only <throat> person who ever talked about it. The game is called De Vulgari Eloquentia. It did just get a reprint, so maybe it might come back into favor. But it uh, it's a game about the development of the Italian language. It's it's you you sort of travel around the, the the board and you can either take a secular or a clerical path and oh that God. allows you sort of different benefits and, and abilities and you, you can't do some things if you're a cleric and you can't do some things if you're a businessman and once you make that decision of course you can't go back you can also try and uh, advance in the ranks of the high of the hierarchy of the church if you want you're collecting different cubes which are different types of, uh, of people. And essentially what you're trying to do is develop the Italian language and try and influence that, uh, you know, the, the different ways and dialects that sort of rise into prominence. You're trying to write great works. And, and you know, it's a very much a kind of a dry Euro game, but it's a lot of fun and it's an interesting theme to it. And there's a lot of things in there that you don't really see much in other games and the way that you use these resources and where you're trying to go and there's not enough time to do everything i i really like it um there's just it's just not one that i mean i used to bring it around and i was the only person who had it so uh <laughs> it was yeah. you know something that but it's it's not something that i ever see or hear anybody really talking about so that is my next one which is de vulgari eloquentia Hopefully, its reprint will raise it out of uh, obscurity. Yeah. Um, based on the looks of the game, I hope not. <laughs> 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 That's, that looks so bad. It is, and even the reprint is kind but, of. But ugly. I mean, like it, it, it looks true to medieval times. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But it, it has it has a very nice style, and and I think the art style works for the theme of the game. Because it sort of feels like these old Renaissance or or before type of uh, artwork. That's just what people did back then, and so I, I think the artwork, while not great looking, I admit, is is very nice for the theme of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's some kind of yeah Renaissance medieval times type artwork over there. So, all right. So my number seven is a deck building game. A small deck building game which is called Flip City. And I feel like Flip City is an underrated game. And um, there was a um, the Asian version of that game as well. I don't know, uh, was it called like something like Town, Small Town? I don't know. Anyway, so this is a deck building game. It's, it's ranked 1886. In this game, you are having kind of like a usual deck building stuff your own deck and you are buying the cards from the center and so on but in this game how you spend your cards is based on the push your luck so um you you have a deck of cards you, sh you have it in your hand and all the cards are double-sided so the other sides of the cards are upgraded parts of those cards the sides of those cards and how you do on your turn you you, you put out those different cards uh, one by one trying to push your luck and you want to get like so you, so you get those different coins during your turn that you can mm -hmm. spend sorry the, the coins here but if you get those frown faces those sad faces angry faces and if you get uh, enough of those angry faces then you bust and you can do nothing right. on your turn so that's really cool push your luck you know the more cards you put out uh, the more possibilities you have to buy more cards and also a one of the winning conditions is to get those victory points out. So if you have enough cards with enough victory point uh, symbols on them, uh, like 18 or something like that, you, you, win, you win the game, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's that. Or you, you, you put out enough cards themselves, yeah, then the right. number of, a certain number of cards. So, so you get all of those cool abilities and you can, uh, I, you can upgrade the cards and flip them to the other side, which is really cool. You can mitigate the luck of those front faces by getting some other cards that kind of uh, cancel those faces and so on. So you can put out more cards. And you can use the flipped side of the cards in order to kind of uh, have a one-time bonus. 
but you have to flip them back to a normal side. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it has a lot of cool small things going on within this really small deck of cards, and it has those different um, small expand. I mean, like two expansions, I think, which adds different cards. I'm not sure the expansions are like great, but yeah, for a for a small game that you can take with you whenever you travel, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's Flip City. Uh, Design Town is the uh, is, is the initial name of the game. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All so right. that's that. My number seven, Flip City. Your number six. Well, my number six is a newer game. It's a couple. Uh, maybe it's a year or two old, but it seems like it didn't really get wasn't a big splash on the scene and uh, i even panned it initially before i really started playing it and then i gave it another chance and i was really glad i did and that game is australia mm -hmm. and that's a u z Australia. oops, oops. yeah <laughs> and this is a game it's a farming sort of game you're, you're building your route network and you're trying to get farms to, to have some income. And then all of a sudden, zombies and Cthulhu come out of the shadows and start to attack you. And so, and so it's a nice mashup of those themes. The game doesn't look great, but it's functional. And it's, it's actually a lot of fun to play. And... I don't know that I've ever won the game because if you if if the monsters if you don't defeat them, they end up winning. So you you really have to go out after the monsters. But you sort of it's got this nice. You see that board that you have on the screen there. You've got these cubes and those are your actions. And so each time you place it, you, you can do each action as many times as you want. And you've got this time track. So you, you know each time you do an action, it costs you time. And as long as you're ahead, then you get to do more actions. But if you place a cube on a spot that already has one, you have to pay money for each cube that's there. So eventually you're going to have to use one of your turns to collect all the cubes back. Otherwise, you'll bankrupt yourself. And mm -hmm. it's a game where you can always do what you want. There's always a way to get something. But it's you've got so little time before the, the, the horde of Migos and uh, other various horrors come at, at you that you just don't have enough time at all. And so it's a lot of fun. It's this interesting mix of combat with sort of Euro-y type engine building and route building mechanisms that works so well. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But I don't see anybody talking about it or playing it. Yeah, it's Marty Mullis, ladies and gentlemen. You can see the board. It's it's Marty Mullis. Yeah, so. But yeah, yeah, maybe I'll try it at some point. Um, nothing I'm especially interested about. No. But it's farming in Australia with Cthulhu. How can you not be interested in it? Farming. <laughs> farming. That's the thing. Even with the Cthulhu, it's farming. <laughs> anyway, so my number six is a an economy game, but on a very light side, and, and, and the the whole theme is very light, and it's Happy Pigs. Oh, and Happy Pigs yeah, is, is ranked quite low in my opinion it's uh, 1631 but it's one of those gateway economy games and one of the biggest successes in my group for, for kind of a, that kind of a game you know and in this game you are oh this is the japanese version well, but the asian version basically but there's the english version where you are growing those different pigs and mm -hmm. you vaccinate them <clears throat> and you feed them and so on and you're trying to sell them in order to get the most money so so the usual thing that buy low sell high thing yeah you want to grow the pigs uh, as big as possible and sell them for the highest price and buy them as small as possible in order to not spend too much money and but there are those different season cards that you pull out and these are the events that will kind of uh, uh change the, the 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 flow of the game during a current round and the cool part about that is the um what, what i like is the outsmarting out guessing your opponent so economy is also cool which i like so a light economy but also and whoever has the most money will win the game but 
Oh, but this one is like uh, you are trying to. So th this season cards it doesn't <coughs> show it's here, but basically those season cards they have certain action points for each action that you get. So there's that feeding and things and selling and buying and so on actions. Yeah, each player chooses action at the same time, so it's simultaneous action select selection. Then you reveal if you go to a certain action spot together, you have to share <coughs> those action points. If you're alone, you don't have to share with anyone. You can do all those action points alone. So you're trying to mm -hmm. outsmart, outguess your opponents in order to to get the most action points of a certain action. So sometimes right. you have to abandon your idea to get a certain action because you know that the other place will go there, and that's it will not be beneficial for you. So you do something else. So it's it's cute. It's it's. It's simple, but it's so much fun to, to kind of figure out what other players want to do and all the different events. And I would have loved to have like even more events, more like different cards you can use, more variability in those. So, but Happy Pigs is a very nice game. I like it very much. Now, do you play with just the pigs or do you use the various other animals? So I don't have a copy anymore, but we had oh. all the animals. Yes, we had every, everything okay. with the promo. <laughs> Was it promo ducks or something like that? Well, but there we were had ducks, there were penguins. Yeah, you, you could get a whole bunch of different animals so that each person could have a different animal if you wanted. Though they didn't really, yeah. Well, I had I had the penguins and I had sheep or something like that. So I mean, like I mean, like what I what I did during my game, each game. But but yeah, we had we had the whole package from promos to all yeah. the animals. So that's a lot of fun. Happy pigs. Good. Your number five. My number five is um, a nice dry Euro game. <laughs> mm. This is one that my friends asked me about, and that's how I kind of found it. But it's not one that really made a big <clears throat> splash. But everybody that I played it with really likes it. The game is called Riverboat. Okay. It came out a couple of years ago. And it's a nice game. It's about, it's, it's, it's almost perfect. You've got, sort of uh, an interesting, uh, lots of interesting choices in it. You're, you're, you've got different roles. I think there's five rounds, and so each person's going to pick. Like if you're the first player, you pick which one you want, and then you're leading that round, which means you get to go first and you get some sort of a bonus. And essentially what you're trying to do is fill your farm with vegetables of this, you know, large patches of the same type of vegetable, because once you harvest them, you, you, you'll get more stuff from doing that. And you're trying to complete goals based upon the number of vegetables you have or, or other things that you do. And you, there's just a lot of different tracks you can work on and different features you can focus on. I say tracks. It's not really a track game. But it, that's almost how it feels. And it's it's really short. It's not a long game at all. And it the, the rules are really simple once you've explained them. Yet there's a whole lot there. And just trying to manage the different boats you want and how far you're going to go along this boat, you know, scoring track or the different vegetables you want, when you want to go first, which, which bonus you want, managing your place in the turn order. I find it a fascinating experience. Even though it seems a little bit dry, it's definitely worth your time. This is Riverboat. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing about that one. Mm, looks nice. It doesn't. Neat. But, uh, <laughs> but it is nice. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, reboots. All right. So, my number five is a roll and write game and has a kind of a classical feel. And you mentioned that game before in the guest that game, and that's Dice Stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Dice Stars, it's my favorite roll and write game. And it's 2172. I don't know why it's so, why it's not ranked higher because I feel like this game is a lot of fun. And um, in this game, you are rolling your dice. Let me see if I have a better picture, for example, here. Yeah. And you're filling those rows and columns. So you fill those based on the, if you grab, like you're drafting the dice from the center. And you can grab the colors or the numbers. So you have to grab, like if, if I grab number five, I have to grab all the number fives and mark them down. If I grab a uh, orange color, I have to, Put, uh, put down, uh, write down all the dice from that orange color and so on. So you're drafting those dice and you are marking down the points 
uh, trying to fill up spaces, but if you jumped over some of the spaces, so like for example here, and there's like for example if there's like two fives, but you only have like you have to start writing from the leftmost space, uh, free space, but you have to do it in in a like um, in a row, and if you have some spaces blocked, then you can you can you cannot take here like two fives and so on. So yeah, you have those extra spaces, and you have those the push lock element comes in with the stars. So when you grab the stars, you, you put out the X's over here. And if you fill up the whole uh, row, you can double the points of that row. And if you will not do that, you, you will get the zero points. So you push your luck. And even if you have a ton of points from that row, but you didn't fill up all spaces of that extra stars row, then you, you bust. Like you bust your points. So it's extremely simple. It's all about what dice to draft, what dice to. You always grab dice from the back. And you can grab one to three dice, and it depends on. Sometimes you you don't want to get a certain color or a number, so you grab less dice. Sometimes you grab more dice. Sometimes you you take away dice that maybe you don't really want, but you see the other player will will, will get and get much more benefit out of that. So, very simple, very engaging, dice stars. All right. So your number four. All right, number four. This is a game we talked about when we were doing my top 100 list. This is a cooperative deck building game, one of the first ones that came out. The game is called Shadow Rift. Yeah. Um, it's a game that, I mean, it, it's still getting expansions. <clears throat> so I think it's all done, and then some new expansion comes out on Kickstarter. But it's a game where there's so much variety and so much... I mean, you, you're looking at the old one there, but... Mm. Um, the, the reprint is a little bit better. Uh, the rule book was terrible, but can see. the the game you've, 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 it's a cooperative deck building game. You can also play it alone, and so you're doing the, the normal deck building thing while trying to interact with this set of different monsters that's coming out against you. And each of the different sets of monsters is going to attack you in a different way, and is going to win the cause you to lose the game in a different way. And as you know, as the monsters come out, you've got to deal with them, but you're also trying to build your walls so that you can protect your town and, and you're, you're trying to, there's just a lot of different things going on. It's a lot of fun and it's, it, the new versions are a little bit easier to pick up and learn. There's a new expansion coming out sometime in the next year or so. I always think it's done, but you know, I'm, I'm happy to have more, but it's not a game that I've heard anyone talk about except me. So that's yeah. why I kind of feel it's a bit <laughs> underrated. True, true. Yeah, I, I've heard about this game. And <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, I, I wanted to get this game at some point. I wanted to play it, but I, I like the old version. I think I even yeah. got the old version, but never, I never played this one. So the old version was kind of rough. Yeah. <laughs> the rule book was terrible. I hated the rule book. I mean, like those but games. I loved didn't... it even as the old version. So I see. All right, so my number four is a game I think only I'm talking about. And people seem to forget this game, but it has such a cool theme, and that's Age of Thieves. Age of Thieves feels like kind of like Assassin's Creed. You know, it, it even has one expansion going on there. Um, in this game, you are those different thieves. You wanna, we wanna get those smaller crystals, but you wanna get this big crystal, you know, because if you get it out of town, you win the game. So, and those different guards, and this, it it's, it's, you can see those different dots. You move on them, and the guards have certain movements. They always follow you, and the other players can set traps, and the guards start following you instead of them, and it's. It has those different cool cards, which are mechanisms that you use, you know, like the old Renaissance style mechanism that you use and so on. So uh, it's it's not, um, I don't know how to explain what, what this game is, but you, you're trying to collect those crystals and escape the town and guards on, on, your, or your, on your heels and, and you're using those different tunnels. And the cool part about that one is that you have, 
if I can find it, maybe not. So in this game, uh, you are spending those different, uh, as you can see, maybe here, you're putting out those cards, which are the actions, and you're putting your action cubes on them. And those action cubes will determine the, the trigger um, sequence of different cards. Mm -hmm. So if you have more cubes on one card, then you trigger it earlier. Sometimes you wanna you want some cards to be triggered before the others, sometimes after the others. And it's really cool part. This is also outsmarting outguessing your opponent where you're trying to put the cubes down in a right way where you sometimes you want your cards to trigger next to each other, kinda. So you hope for that as well and push your luck and so on. So it's yeah, like a micromanagement of 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 when something triggers. But it's it's simple, rather simple game. It's it doesn't have many rules and it feels like heist and Assassin's Creed, a little bit of that, you know, Renaissance things and cool special cards. It has the expansion with extra rolls and things, so I like it. That's Age of Thieves. All right. I know very little about this game other than yeah, what it's, you said. It's it's hard <laughs> to explain. I, I don't know how to explain this yeah. game. Really. Okay. So but it's cool. So, your number three. All right, my number three is a game that I talk about a lot. It's a game that you don't like, but it's a game that I do. And I have one friend that does, and I don't think anybody else does. <laughs> and that it's a it's based on an old movie. We talked about it in our horror games uh, one, and that is called The Bloody Inn. Yeah. Uh, it's a game. It's, it's a sort of a stark artwork. It's based on an old French movie about the same thing as the theme where you're killing people and, and burying them in your backyard and stealing their money. It's a fast little card game. It is nice interplay between the different abilities. You've sort of got this, you know, as, as you, you're trying to build up a hand of cards, it's going to get you discounts for taking other things, but then you've got to pay your money to them. And you're trying to, of course, get the most money and then find out, you know, the, 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 the money crack only goes up to, I think, 40. And then you've got to take a turn eventually and cash that in for these checks. Otherwise, you're limited to 40. And but you need to make sure that you still have enough. There's a lot going on. It's not long at all. It works really well with two. I it works well with more, but it's I, I just find it the best as a two player game. I love the little expansion for it, which adds some some more people and some more special abilities that you can kind of get at the beginning of the game. I just really like this game, and sometimes I feel like I'm the only one. No, all right. So yeah, I've played this one. It wasn't something. I don't know. I just didn't like the game. I don't even remember why exactly. But yeah, it wasn't for me. Didn't click with me. So, all right. So my number three is a game about moles doing kind of a like world war, mm -hmm. alternative reality, and so on. So that's top home. And I, nobody talks about Top Home, though it's it's uh, it's it's a really cool game. I don't have a copy anymore due to certain circ circumstances, but I I would have loved to get a copy, but it's a little, little bit hard to get a copy. Uh, or maybe it is now. Now 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 maybe you can get it to the geek markets and all that. You know, it's not in the shops, but it's from Looping Games, and the Looping Games they do the nineteen um, XX series, but not the the heavy economy ones, but the small boxes, you know, were kind of a, also like a lot of game in a small box. Yeah. But in this game, you are playing as moles and you are grabbing those different cards. And uh, these different cards are actions that you can do. And you can move your moles around or, around or, or do those different actions, uh, like kind of like special abilities. So it's kind of like building up your, not really your deck, but your hand. And you're trying to create a line of sight between two of your moles, and nothing should be in the way. And that's how you get the points. The 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 taller the low or row or column or whatever, the more points you get. And but the cool part about that one is that you cannot just sit on one spot if nobody blocks you, you get those points each round. No, if you already got the points for that situation you have to move your moles around and create kind of a new line of sight in order to score those points again 
And you, you can even like move that mole here and then move it back, thus creating the same line of sight. But you did something, you moved, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of, they popped out, they saw each other again. They are like cheering, ooh, really cool. You know, we, we saw each other again. So that's a really nice touch in that kind of a area control, but trying to just create line of sight through different cards. And this, this game has a lot of replayability because it has those, uh, it has different, uh, diff <laughs> different types of cards and you can create different games. You can create more take that game. You can create more peaceful game. It's something in between, something about that one, something, something else. You know, it's, it's you can mix and match the different cards and you use only a certain amount of cards, certain types of cards in each game. And it creates a different game each time. So that's a ton of fun with not that many rules. That's top home. A great game. All right. So your number two my number two now this is a game i don't know this one i don't know if it's if it quite counts as underrated but because of the type of game it is I, it feels to me like it does the game is one deck dungeon mm -hmm. and it's essentially a solo game and it's probably one of the best solo games that there is i mean you can play it with two but it's it's best as a solo game it's a game I've played hundreds of times. It's one of my go-to travel games. And you're going through a dungeon, which is one deck, and you're using time. So you've got three floors, and you know if, if, if every time you do something, you've got to discard some cards from this deck. And then you're rolling the dice, and as you kill monsters or evade traps, you eventually you get bonuses, which could be additional dice that you roll of different colors or special abilities you can trigger each each encounter or more life, and you're trying to build up your character in that way, also using the cards from the deck, and eventually you'll come to some big boss monster that will probably kill you or you'll kill it. I, you know, that's hmm. kind of how it goes. It's a fascinating little game. It's a nice, it's a very small, you know, not very many components. It's just a bunch of dice and a few cards, well, a deck of cards, and it's it's great, and it works really well as, a, as just this short adventure with a dungeon and character building feel that you can knock out in half an hour when you're you know, in a hotel for a business trip or something like that. I just don't, because it's a solo <clears throat> game, you don't hear very many people talking about it because that's just not the kind of game you take and play with somebody else. And so that's why I feel it's a bit underrated, but I really like it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Never played this one. Can't really comment on that one, but maybe I'll try at some point. So. That's one deck dungeon. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go to my number two. And my number two is my go-to party game, and that's Insider. And I feel like Insider, I know there are those weird words and so on that I don't care about at all because I like the extreme simplicity of this game. Um, mm -hmm. Insider is, it, it, it just... It just fits kind of every group I play with. Like, there are only very few folks. I played this game a ton. And there were very few folks who didn't like that game because of the hidden roles, you know, the, the, the stress that they need to endure when they are insider and so on. So you have the different roles. One of them is a master. He knows the word. The insider, he's hidden from the others, but he also knows the word and he needs to kind of uh, uh, get the group going towards the, that word. So it's like 20, 20 questions. So everyone starts asking questions from the master. And answer, master can answer only like yes or no. And you're trying to guess the word. If you guess the word, you start voting on who is the insider, who knew the inside information about the word. You know, oh, how, why did you ask? So we were we were asking about the building. Why uh, have why you started asking about water? You know, and the word was ocean, stuff like that. Why you changed the topic so suddenly? You are probably insider, and so on. So there's a lot of that going on, and sometimes yeah. people just guess words, and it can <laughs> confuse. And that insider is 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 benefiting from that. And sometimes when you see how people vote, there are two vote rounds based on if you vote no, then and so on. basically the rules, yeah. But um, at some at so, sometimes you can even look at how the people how people vote if if people vote um, in a weird way, you kind of see aha, maybe he's insider. Sometimes people snap and so on. Some. 
sometimes uh, even comments who are just common folks who just try to guess the word they 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 feel like insider I don't know it's just it's really cool to guess who is insider and even if you lose uh, it's it's a very fast game yes, do it again and do it again and do it again you you, you play this game many times in a row mm -hmm. I've never like played it only once in a row I, I kind of played it like with, with like for example we, we play the bigger game or we, we are about to play the bigger game but we start with the insider we're like we're gonna play like six seven games in a row of insider and then we're gonna go go on with another game like a warm-up thing you know so insider mm -hmm. number two oh, there you go I like that game yeah your number one uh, the last game on which my number one now this the game... most underrated this game was reprinted, but I don't even think the reprint did very well. It was a retheme as well. It's a game that I love. It's a game that makes me happy. And it's a game that, I mean, even though there are some component issues that, that make it, and, and some, some of the rules don't make a ton of sense intuitively, it works if you play it with the right people. This is uh, The game is City of Remnants. Yeah. It was fr from the early days of Plaid Hat. Mm -hmm, one of their, mm -hmm. I think it was their third game. And it's a game that just never mm -hmm. really took off. It's a game that no one, I mean, everybody who tried it kind of liked it, but nobody really ever played it again. It, it takes, I mean, some of the problems with it are that it's, you know, it's kind of a dark, the colors of the board are dark and make it look a little bit busy. And, uh, the, and the way that things are spaced on the table, it's kind of hard to see what, what your choices are. So there's a lot of sort of some usability issues. But as a game, it works really well. It's got a bit of deck building, a bit of combat, a bit of area control, a bit of sort of building the buildings that you want, a bit of economic resource management, trying to figure out ways to make money. It's it's just, it works really well. It's, it's a fun game and it works with all the player counts. And it's, I like sort of the, this, this, it's a weird way to do deck building, but it's, it's fun. And as you, if people die, you have to take somebody out of your deck. So there's that too. And I just, I really like City of Remnants. I wish that it, I don't know. I wish that it hadn't kind of faded away. Uh, and mm -hmm. now again, Neon Gods is the reprint, but I haven't heard anybody talk about that either. So I just, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've got both still. And although I like the older theme, the, the newer one is a little bit, solves some of the usability issues. So, yeah, anyway, maybe they shouldn't have refemed that. I don't. Know. Well, the new one is is very garish looking. That's sort of the problem. The, the color scheme on the new one is on uh, City of Ghosts or Neon Gods is kind of in your face. <laughs> it, yeah, it, lo it, it it looks terrible. To be honest, it looks extremely it's, terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's it's thematic, I guess, to where it's going for, but it's it's a very garish color scheme. And so I think that might have not helped it, but it's the same game. I, I and I like both of them. Uh, I just think this one's vastly underrated, and still has a lot of potential. All right, all right. That's Neon Gods, or City of Remnants. Sorry, City of Remnants no. is the one that that I prefer. I, I I was about to to get this game and try this game a long time ago, but I didn't. Because I was like, hmm, seems weird that people are not, you know, the ratings were not as good as I would have loved them to have. Huh? Yeah. Can I have the full <laughs> no, rights to that story? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what I wanted to say is that I, like, I was about to buy the game, but I looked at the ratings, I looked at different reviews and such, and then I realized that maybe this game has too many problems. For me to, to you know kind of buy and try it though i still want to try it you know but i wasn't about like i didn't want to spend money on that but no well if only you knew someone who had a copy hmm <laughs> i don't know i, I have to, or I, two I, just, just, <laughs> or two yeah i've i'll just do a blind guess and play with someone maybe he has a copy anyway <laughs> so uh my number one game and uh, you know that i love this game and um I feel like this game didn't have the fair treatment. And I don't know why the company that printed this game 
doesn't want to re fix the small things in this game in order to make it a great one. And I'm talking about Kings of Aaron's team. Mm. And what I'm talking about is that Good in one. this game, the, the, the roles are, it's, it's uh, 16, 28, yeah, rank. So uh, the roles in this game, they, 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 the special abilities, they are not as balanced, but it's, it's not hard to just take those roles, balance them out based on a ton of feedback, and then just get out the second edition of the game. But it probably at earlier years of Taste of Internet Games, when they were um, a younger company, they didn't do that well with that game. And thus they think that this game will not do well right now. But I feel like this game might do well if it's done properly, if it's marketed properly. There was an expansion that was on Kickstarter that wasn't marketed properly. And thus the expansion didn't get funded. And so they dropped right. the whole idea of that game. But I yep. just... This, this is the game that I avoided because I was like, huh, it doesn't look that good. Then I played this game, like uh, one of the first board game camps in Estonia. And I was like, and I was enamored. I was like, I was offering money for the game for, for the owner of the copy. I was like, give me that game. I want this game right now because it's, it was really hard to get this game at that point already. So, <clears throat> but eventually I got the game and uh, it's, it's a programming game where you program your airship and it's a pick and deliver game and a little bit of stock market as well. You're delivering goods from point A to point B, but you need to build those different uh, uh, houses. I don't know what's the, what, what, what are they called? Depots, something like that. So you build the depots, you're trying to make mm. connections between those cities and you can use the depots of other players by paying extra money and so it's really cool it's never like you're totally blocked from things but you have to just spend more money and you're upgrading your ship in order to hold more cargo in order to to move faster and better get better movement cards and this programming where you reveal the cards and then you know it's like robo rally thing you know it's uh, yeah. everybody goes in their way uh, and things can happen and it's just such a nice game that just got buried because of, in my opinion, because of the inability of the company to to deal with that game's balance and to do the right marketing. That's my personal opinion, of course. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to blame Taste of Games for for that because they were young at that point when they made the comp this game. But it's not so hard. Like the expansion, if they would reprint the game and do the expansion, by the way, which adds. Uh, the contracts and, and so on, which adds more variability and better play for two players and so on, that would be a nice touch. And they mm -hmm. could just add those extra roles, like or they could add those uh, fixed roles into the expansion box. So you can, you know, throw the old ones away and put the new ones in or just do another reprint with, with mm -hmm. fixed roles. So and one more thing is that this game plays up to seven and because of that simultaneous uh, programming, even with more players, this game doesn't take that long. It's, I don't know, it's just just great, great game that was abandoned, and I really want somebody... That, so the Tasty Mystery Games dropped this game totally. So, yeah. and, and seems like Scott Alms doesn't really bother himself trying to get this game published again maybe maybe i think i think he i talked to him at some point about this game and he said he's trying to find a publisher but i even yeah. talked to gray fox games about this game i was like take the scott arms games kings of fairness team i like the game uh and I, I liked i was hoping for the expansion as well i think the expansion itself had some problems in just the way that it was i think even the name sounded a little bit silly and, yeah, and yeah. It, it just I mean it, it was it was not marketed well, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it, it would be vastly helped by that expansion and by some more roles. Uh it's a game that I still have and I still quite like, even though I haven't played it in quite a while, so maybe I'll have to get it out again. But I, I agree it's a good game and it is underrated. Sadly. So maybe somebody will hear that hear that and then <laughs> I know good games eventually come back. 
You can see like Atlantis many, rising. Many of them do. Yeah. Like, uh, as, uh, I don't know, what was the... Yeah, Atlantis Rising is the one game that didn't do well, but it was reprinted and made into a better, better self, basically. Mm. So that's the list. That's the uh, top 10 underrated games of me and Kyle. And that's true. we're going to end a show on that kind of a sad note. <laughs> like... We're never going to get this game an expansion. But that's how it is. Maybe somebody will hear and repeat the game. That's that's what I hope for. But all these games, check them out. Um, I think both our lists are, are cool. They 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 have all those you know older games that were overlooked at some point and might be a huge fun mm -hmm. for, for, for for the listeners here. So that's it for the episode 14 of Earthful Cast. All right. And we're going to end it in. Now I feel sad. Yeah. <laughs> True. But yeah, bye bye. All right. We're going to go and feel sad. Feel sad about our games that we don't get more of. Offline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Feel sad offline by playing more <laughs> good games. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. Or bad games that we just don't bad games. Bad yet. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.